Hey, beautiful souls and creative minds. Welcome to The Artist Stoop, the podcast where we turn the art world into your personal playground. I'm Jillian Zapata, your host, and I can't wait to dive into the art world with you. Each episode will be kicking it with an incredible artist, unraveling their stories and turning the spotlight on the magic that happens beyond the brush. Get ready to discover new perspectives, forge connections, and immerse yourself one captivating conversation at a time. So grab your favorite beverage, maybe a sketchbook, and let's jump into the kaleidoscope of creativity together. This is The Artist's Stoop, where art isn't just a thing you see, it's an experience you feel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my new artist talks that I'm going to do for my art. Um, so I would like to kick this one off by talking about my Chemical Rapture collection. And it's a fun one. So buckle in, it's going to be a, a long explanation, but I think it's it really needs it for this collection. And then I go in, so I'm going to talk about the collection as a whole and how I got started with it and everything. And then I'm going to dive into each individual piece um, and the meaning and the color palette and everything that goes on with that piece. So let's go. So Chemical Rapture, that is the title of this collection. And you know me, I love a good play on words. So chemical comes from that chemical reaction in our bodies when we get turned on. Um when our cheeks flush and our heart starts to pound, when we are near someone that we're attracted to or that we love or that, you know, we're in a relationship or maybe not. Um, and then rapture by definition is an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. So that's why this collection is called chemical rapture. See, good play on words. Um, this was a really fun collection to paint because I really allowed the music to guide me on this journey. And it all started when I was listening to the Anderson East song, Hood of My Car. And while listening to the lyrics, I could imagine this couple and their relationship and the intimacy um, that was between them. So I started searching for songs that subtly and not so subtly um, talked about being intimate and, um, sex in the lyrics. And let's just say it wasn't very hard, um, to come up with this playlist because most music today hints about relationships and intimacy. And I started creating the playlist and listening to the songs, like really listening to the songs. I listened to the lyrics. I was listening to the beat. I was trying to get the mood and the energy of those songs. And I started to imagining what that intimacy would look like abstracted on a canvas, because that's how my fantastical my brain works. And I'm going to say right now that I don't think I, I never really finished the, this collection. There are actually several songs in my playlist that I haven't gotten around um, to painting yet. And when making sure. And when making my song selection, I made sure that the songs were both from a male and a female perspective, because I thought that was important. And I also tried to hit on different types of intimacy, you know, like a long loving relationship that maybe needs to spice it up a bit to a couple that still has the hots for one another to a one night stand, to, you know, to a young couple, you know, finding love for the first time to even a, a fantasy of being with someone that you can never have. So I did my usual. I laid on the floor with my headphones on and I was blaring the music and staring at the ceiling. And I tried to figure out what colors were for each song. Like I really tried to hear the color as weird as that sounds. Um, and it was more so I could have a starting point. And some of the color palettes did change as I started to paint. As always, I let the painting kind of tell me what it needed. Um, but after listening on repeat, you know, I found the color palettes. And then I tried to find my reference photos for the poses of the couples. Because I paint um, from reference photos 
to get my painting started. I call it abstract from realism. So I always have that starting point and then I take it and then I abstract it. So um, I tried to find my reference photos for poses of couples. Some got super, super spicy and others were like more sweet and romantic. Um, and in some of the paintings, you can really see the bodies and in others, it isn't there. You know, it depending, it kind of depended on the song. So um, just like in the music and sometimes in the lyrics are subtle and sometimes it wasn't. So I let that play out um, on, yeah, I let that play out on the canvas. <laughs> so another unique feature about this collection, um, I don't know why, but I felt like I needed to hang them tapestry style with the, with the exception of just one of them. So I don't know, you can kind of see one back here. So tapestry style uh, painting is where all the raw edges are kept raw. And then you have like a wooden piece up at the top. Um, it's like a wooden bar that like sandwiches the canvases in, and then you can hang the bar, the one bar on the wall. So I think this goes back to when tapestries were woven in the old days with stories on them. And I think I wanted to have, I wanted these paintings to tell a story as well. And I also liked the idea that like the, that the canvas still has like a little bit of movement to it. I don't know why. It's just, I liked it. I went with it. It's where we're at. <laughs> um, and what's fun is even though they weren't part of the collection, I did receive two commissions that people wanted to be part of this concept and idea. One couple actually commissioned my husband to create this herringbone wooden piece um, for their wall and then asked him if I could paint on it. And I told them about this collection and I was working on and they jumped at the idea of it. So how I went about that is I learned a little bit about them and then chose a song that I felt captured them and who they were. And then I chose colors that matched the song, but also was able to pull in colors of where the painting was going to be hanging in their living room and their bar area. Um, and it is stunning. Stunning. Photos really do not do this piece justice. It was a five foot by six foot, five foot by six foot piece and is big and it was heavy because it was on wood. Um, and I just had a lot of fun painting it. But there's so many details that if you don't see it in person, like up close in person, that you can't you can't capture it in a photo. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those when I look at the photo of where it's hanging, I just go, that was a good one. <laughs> Um, the second couple that I did a commission for with this collection, they wanted a little bit more hands-on approach and I loved helping them bring it to life. They wanted a piece for their bedroom, which I also helped them design their bedroom because I, you know, do interior design as well. Um, and what made it special, special is that they wanted to be the reference photo that I used. So we had a little fun photo shoot. And I helped them out with poses and was able to really capture their energy and the spicy level that they wanted to bring to the painting. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We had we had a really good time during that photo shoot. Um, and then I chose, you know, of all the photos that I took, I picked a photo and then I chose a song that fit perfectly with them and their vibe and energy. Um, that they wanted to bring. And also their color palette was a different color palette. Um, and since I kind of helped design their room, I knew what colors I needed to bring. And they had like a couple specific elements that they wanted to bring in the color palette. So I was really trying to tie that in. Um, so, and that color palette really pushed me as an artist and to step out of my comfort zone. Um, but the painting did turn out amazing and they absolutely love it and the other part that they they got to pick was how subtle the abstraction was of their bodies from the pose so it's just like if you look at it you see an abstract painting um and you can kind of see the outlines of the bodies they didn't want it to be so in your face um 
So I, because they still wanted, you know, if anyone were to walk in their room, you know, they didn't want someone to be like, uh, kind of a thing. So I was able to subtly um, paint them in, in this painting, which was awesome. So the playlist of the song, this is, this is the playlist of the song, the, the paintings that actually got painted. So there was five of them. So the, uh, she by Harry Styles, Lingerie by Lizzo, Hood of My Car from Anderson East, Ooh La from John Legend, and Senorita from Camila Cabello and Sean Mendez. I never know if I say her last name right, but I'm just going with it. Um, so the two commission pieces that I painted were Splash from John Legend and Nervous from John Legend. Do you see a theme here? Um, so the songs that I haven't painted yet that I still really want to paint, I just don't know when I'll get around to painting them. So there probably will be a chemical rapture part two type thing. Um, so that playlist, those, those songs are seven by Dave Matthews band. Go and listen to the lyrics of that one. That's a naughty, naughty song and you don't even realize it anyway. Um, Dress by Taylor Swift, Leave the Door Open, which is Silk Sonic, which is Bruno Mars and Anderson Pock, and then Wildflowers and Wine from Marcus King. So I kind of have like this very broad spectrum of songs. Um, and it's actually a play, a public playlist on Spotify. If you want to go and listen to it, um, I can include the link down in the show notes. Um, so you can go and take a listen to the to all the songs together um, for this Chemical Rapture collection. So I don't know if this collection will ever truly be done. One, because I have those five that I still want to paint. Um, but I feel like it's a collection that has different versions. And music is such a huge part of my painting process. And there are so many good songs out there. That would be a lot of fun to paint. Like I could really do a whole collection probably on like nineties love song ballads and then probably enjoy every minute of painting it. Like I can, I, here's part of the playlist out. Um, Boys to men, I'll make love to you. A Whitney Houston song, probably either I have nothing or, you know, we can come back to that one. And then um, Brian Adams, of course, there's like multiple, I mean, I might just have to paint it for S's and G's um, because I can really envision it. And I think it'd be a really fun, fun to paint just listening to the playlist, more or less. Anyway, I digress. So that is the collection, the Chemical Rapture collection in a nutshell. So now I'm going to dive into each song um, and the stories in every little facet of each painting. So the first painting is I Felt the Pool, and it was inspired by the song Anderson East, Hood of My Car. So this is the largest painting I've ever painted. It is five feet by seven feet, and it has a walnut wood tapestry that just, it just finishes it off, and it looks so good. So, and at first I was kind of intimidated by the size of it, but then as I got into it, it started developing and I got the groove and it really started to transform on the canvas. Um, and I just really wanted to paint big and I had the wall space to do it. So I was like, what the heck? Let's paint a big painting. Um, so I did. And it's it's really, really beautiful. When I was showing it at the other art fair, it was the painting that everyone stopped and was like, wow. Um, so which made me feel good. So, because it, it, it really is quite stunning. So it was the first piece of the collection and it started out because of listening to this song. You know, this was the song that um, started the whole collection. And when I heard the song, I could see the color palette form in my head. I knew it was darker and moodier. Like if you listen to the song, like the beat, it just it has that like dark moodiness to it. You just have to listen to the song and you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, and it was a darker, moodier palette than I was used to painting with. So it for sure had Payne's gray in it and it's more dominant color. And Payne's gray is one of those colors that ends up in all my paintings. 
Um, it's a really deep blue gray color and it's just really, really rich in tone. I actually use it more than I use black. I use it instead of black most of the time. So even though the color palette is moodier, it still has these brightness little spots to it. So it has like a beige background and pops of yellow, yellow gold and coral pink and a turquoise. And these colors are just more like little subtle wisps, but they help keep the energy of the painting moving. So all of my paintings start with a short story in my head because, you know, I, my background is in creative writing and my degree is actually in film and media with an emphasis in screenwriting. So to me, everything starts with a story before I even get to the canvas. So, and I think I actually started writing this short story. I don't think I ever finished it, but it's out there. Well, it's on my computer. It's not out there. The world has not seen it yet. So I imagine this young couple, like fresh out of high school, they, they just graduated and they started their relationship at the end of their senior year. And they wanted to make the best of their summer together before heading off to college. And this particular scene that I was imagining was them taking a late night drive um, up to this observatory. I grew up in central Oregon and there was this observatory, sorry, backstory on the mountain pass and at night you have the most perfect view of the stars in the sky and then during the day you have the perfect 360 panoramic view of the cascade mountain range so i'm setting the scene here people i imagine this young couple taking this late night drive up to this observatory and staring up at the night sky and enjoying the view but also having like all these nervous feelings because they really liked each other um, but they hadn't had sex yet. And there's like this energy and this chemical reaction between them just building up. Um, and they just have this nervous electric energy between them. Like you do when you have that first kind of first love. So the beat and the energy of the song really match this idea, this concept. So the reference photo I used is merely two people that are kind of more leaning into each other. The man is giving like the woman a kiss on the forehead and she's just like leaning into him with like her eyes closed. Um, and it's just more, it's just really sweet and gentle. And I was really trying to capture this feeling of this innocence of this unknown. And I chose I made the choice to not really outline the bodies in this piece because much like the relationship, it really isn't fully formed yet. So you have this abstracted shape on the canvas, but you can tell that it's forming. Like the pops of color is the underlying bursts of excitement and joy building um, between them. And so you, you just really can't see them. Like you could kind of maybe figure out that there is potentially two bodies, but it's just, it's just more abstracted because the relationship isn't fully formed. So that is, I felt the pool. And I'll make sure to include like the links to have all of these in the, dis in my show notes in the description so that people can go and like see them after I say this and be like, oh, okay. I see what she's talking about. Um, so yeah. Second painting I'm going to talk about is called I've Been Thinking About It All Day. Um, it was inspired by John Legend's song, Ooh La. Um, and this was actually the third piece I painted in the collection. And the color palette for this one also came to me very quickly. So this piece is based off of John Legend's song, Ooh La, from his Bigger Love album. And let's just be honest. Um, I, I probably could have painted this entire collection based on John Legend's songs you know, because that's where I also got my commission. So technically there's three John Legend songs in this collection. Um, but there was something about this song in particular on that album that um, that really just hit a nerve for me. Um, I think because it does have this old, this sultry kind of old timey feel to it. And I just love the sound of John Legend's voice. Let's be honest, guys. Like he is like the, the Marvin Gaye of our time. Like I just, I listen to John Legend a lot, people. Okay. So based on that, I picked a color palette that was calmer in the tones, but still had a real richness to it. Um, it had this warmth with some pops of a few co cooler colors. So it has like a deep, deep blue. It has a little pops of Kelly green, a hit, couple hints of pink, um, like a pinky, beigey, like flesh tone background. 
um, with pops of like a deep, deep, like pinkish rust color. I think that's the best way I could explain it. Um, and they just like blended really well together. I don't know why. It kind of reminded me like of e what's the like a mid century modern kind of um rich richness in its color palette. Um, and as far as the story goes for this piece, I imagine this couple who has kids and they're constantly busy. And in the scene I depicted in my head was that they still have the hots for one another. And they are coy and this couple's playful, even amongst all the crazy with the kids. And I imagine that the wife like sends the husband a dirty text first thing in the morning, like right after he leaves for work. And that is what he is thinking about all day. And the text exchange that kind of goes back and forth during the day between them before he gets home. You have to go listen to the lyrics. Okay. It's the other thing. You guys have to understand. Go listen to the lyrics, then look at the paintings, listen to my story. It all comes together. I promise. Um, so the reference photo I used for them is a little bit more spicy. But going with the beat in the song, I tried to paint it with like fluid brush strokes. Um, and it and it really does go with the flow. It's not um there isn't a lot like abrasiveness to my brush strokes, brush strokes. Like there really is a lot of fluid um movements to it. Um, and it goes with the beat of the song. It goes with the couple. Um, and as far as the, the couple goes, you can see the outlines, but they're, they're still kind of subtle. Like you kind of have to look for it. It isn't in your face. Um, and I did that on purpose with this one, you know, cause I don't, I don't, I don't know why it's just like, you can see them, but you don't see them at first until you look for them. Um, and then fun fact about this piece, this piece was featured in three, 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 three issues of, uh, British Vogue. So, which was fun. Actually, one of them was the November issue of 2022 of like the memoriam version, uh, uh, of like the memoriam to the queen. So obviously it will live in infamy. And so my painting is in that is in that, um, I want to say episode, but that's not right. That, yeah, that volume, that, that magazine. <laughs> All right. Next painting. So it is called, but every touch is, and it was inspired by the Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello song, Senorita. I loved painting this song so much. Uh, I mean, since so painting this painting so much, not this song. <laughs> I love painting to this song. Um, and I am glad that this piece has a new home and is being enjoyed. Um, this piece was unique. It was actually the fourth, the four, I can't speak today. The fourth piece I painted, um, in the collection and it just makes you want to have like a sultry dance. Like I picture like that scene from Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh -huh where they are at the cantina in the beginning of the movie and they meet and they have like this, you know this sultry saucy dance and if you haven't got if you haven't seen that movie <laughs> why first off um and second go see it and then you'll know what i'm talking about anyway so this piece was painted on a designed wood panel kind of like how my husband did the commission piece with the herringbone um i worked with him and i laid out a specific like block work pattern um and then stained it super dark so that the bright colors would really pop on it um i don't know why i did this one different but i had an idea in my head and you know i was pregnant and i was probably a little delulu um and i said honey we need to make this and he's like okay so that's what he says when i present him with a whole bunch of project projects Anyway, so this was my second time painting on a wood panel like this. And the colors in this painting, like, remind me of a summer night. Like, they're warm, they're inviting, they're fresh. Um, so you have, like, the, that summer, that summer sunset, you know, colors with, like, pops of, like, turquoise and blue. Um, kind of, like, remind you of, like, being at, like, the beach or something. Like, somewhere tropical. So the story that goes along with this painting, it's a little bit more fantastical. I imagine these two people 
meeting on a vacation somewhere, somewhere hot. I'm thinking like Miami or Barcelona. And they have this really hot and steamy love affair for a week. And at the end, they completely go their separate ways. Right. And that's, th that's their story. Um, and of course that dance scene from Mr. and Mrs. Smith obviously plays out in my head at one point in this week long love affair for these people. Um, but yeah, and they're totally cool with it. You know what they each go back to their separate lives and it's something that they keep between them and they always have. So the reference photo I used is for this couple is a little bit more playful, still a little saucy. Um, and they for sure are having a good time. So when I painted it, I was dancing to that song. Um, I wear these. And so like the music, like it's really, really encapsulated in, in me and I can really focus on the song and stuff. So anyway, I was wearing these, had it blaring and I was dancing to the song while I was painting. And I think that really came out onto the canvas. So it's like a lot of, there's just a lot of energy in my brush strokes. Um, some are real rough, some are more fluid. It's just, it's kind of, it just goes with the beat of the song. So when you look at it, it looks like the couple could possibly be dancing or, you know, I will leave it up to your um, imagination on that one. So it was really special. It's a piece that I felt really connected to for some reason. I, I don't know why. It, I don't know if it was the color, the beat, the mood, the energy. Um, but I just felt really, really connected to it. So much so that I had it hanging in my own living room for several months before it found its new home. And I was actually really sad to see it go. It was one of those paintings that I got really attached to. Um, but now it's it truly is being enjoyed. And actually the client who purchased it, she said the most wonderful thing to me when I, I asked her, well, what does it do for you? And she had recently gotten divorced and she said, and she's totally okay with me sharing this, by the way. Um, she said it reminds her of a love and a passion that she wants in her next relationship. She wants that for herself. So it is her daily reminder that she is worthy of having that kind of love, having that kind of passion in a relationship. And when she told me that, I started crying because that just gave me all the feels. Um, and it was just really, really special um, that my painting does that for her. You know, it's really special when when an artwork can actually bring that level of joy or that kind of personal daily reminder to them, even when it is a saucy topic, you know? Um, so the next painting is called So Pretend, and it was based off of the song She by Harry Styles. <sighs> Talk about drama. This painting brings the drama to it. Um, it was actually the second piece I painted in the entire collection, and I knew I wanted the painting to be mostly black and have um, hot neon pink in it and other neon colors to it. It's actually hanging back there behind me. So when I listened to the song, I instantly saw the color palette. It came to me so fast. Um, and I think that's why I painted it second. It was a new color palette for me. So I was like really, really excited to explore this idea that I had in my head for it as well. Um, I knew I also wanted to have torn canvas and stitched back on um, in pieces. And I'll tell you why in a second. So how I interpreted this song, the story that I have for this song is a man who is having a fantasy about a woman he has only ever seen in the distance. Like he sees this woman on a daily basis, but he is married and has a family. So this person is like completely off limits, but he fantasizes about her all the time and he really wants her. Um, so that's why I wanted to have like bits and pieces of torn canvas stitched back on because it kind of goes with the idea that it is a fantasy that it's stitched together. Like it's not fully formed. Obviously the can the canvas itself is a whole, but there's pieces on there that I specifically painted separate um, and then put it on there 
stitched it on and sewed on it and then painted over it. And so it, like, it kind of has some layers to it. So the reference photo I used for this couple was a little bit more up close and personal. Um, it's like a man standing behind a woman. And I th I just have to explain because you can't really see them on the canvas. So it's a man standing behind a woman and he has like his, he, her head's tilted and her face is up and his, and he is like kissing her neck. And then like his hand like comes up over like her chin, kind of like covering her mouth, kind of like this. Okay. Um, and so it's a little bit darker, a little bit moodier, but since it's a fantasy, the outline of these two people is very, very difficult to see. Like you really can't see him, his head or anything, but you can kind of see the outline of like her face and you could barely see like his hand coming up over her mouth. Um, but I did that on front purpose because it's a fantasy. It isn't real, you know, um, it's a facade. So where there would be like his eyes is also where like I have a torn canvas stitched, you know, back on it acts like a mask covering his eyes if, if you were dreaming. So it's a piece I had fun painting because it was different than what I normally would do. But I think it was playful and it's really playful because I got to play with the story to try and pull it onto the canvas. And I think that's one of the reasons why I had a lot of fun playing with it. And it's it's one of those paintings that I went, mm, my idea that I had in my head, the idea that I had in my fantastical brain, actually came out for once on the campus. So it's there, back there, obviously. And if you're watching, you can see it. But if you're listening, you know, watch the YouTube, see the painting. Anyway, so... The fifth piece that was actually painted um, for this collection is titled, I Like That, right there, um, is based off the Lizzo song, Lingerie. So it was the last piece I painted. And at this point, I was really, really pregnant when I was painting. And to be honest, I really don't remember painting it. Um, I was really tired. And I think I was trying to like get it finished uh, for when I was because I was presenting this um, collection at the other art fair last May. Um, but I think the message of the song and the painting are really important to show that women are sexual beings and that we can own that. And I love how in the song Lizzo is so honest in her lyrics. So the mood and the beat of the song, it just oozes with sex appeal. Um, so when picking this color palette, I went with something a little darker, but also has this soft femininity to it. Um, it has this purple, it's like a, it's like a purple gray. It's not like a true purple, purple, it's a purple gray. And that has like this shimmer layer over it um, in some spots. And it's just, it's really pretty. Um, and for me, I didn't put much imagination to the story for this one. Um, I think Lizzo did it perfectly with her lyrics. And so I let that play out for me in my head. Um, so the reference photo for this one is a little, probably the more explicit one, much like the lyrics, but I wanted it to go with the song. So you can see the bodies in this painting much more than any other painting. So, and I tried to put more emphasis on defining the woman's body because the song is about her and her perspective her feelings and owning her sexuality and, and being okay in that, like sitting in that and just owning it. So, and I want more women to feel more comfortable owning their sexuality. And that's really the message that I'm trying to get across in this painting. And, you know, when I showed it, it was the painting that got the, oh, oh, kind of a thing like we, that's that's happening i was like yes that is happening on that canvas yes you can see yes you can see that couple being intimate it's in your face it's not subtle at all and you know it was really funny watching you know when people would come up and look at it to see their different reactions to it like some people were like that's awesome and then other people like were like oh my goodness and like they would get like all like nervous about it 
which is really funny to me. I don't know why. I just really loved watching people's reaction to it. Um, but yeah, so that is, that is that painting. Um, and that is the full chemical rapture collection as it sits right now. Like I said, I might paint the other five at some point. Um, who knows? I might. And who knows, I might have, like I said, different versions of it, like a part two, part three, part four. It might never end. The songs, you know, come out or I discover a new song. Um, I just, I have a lot of fun with this collection. Um, so yeah, that is, that is Chemical Rapture. Um, and once again, I will include my Spotify playlist so you can go and listen to the song. Um, and then also the links to all the paintings so you can go listen to the song, listen to the lyrics, people like really listen to the lyrics and hear the beat like do do the work then go look at the paintings and i think you will have a fun time you know really getting inside my head and seeing where i came from when i painted these so i hope you enjoy it um yeah and it most of the pieces are are still available at this point in time um but yeah they're available on my website at jillianzapeta.com uh, and that, my friends, wraps up another colorful episode of The Artist Stoop. A huge thank you to our incredible guests for sharing their art and stories. If you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on the next Stoop chat. And don't forget to spread the love. Share your favorite episodes with fellow art enthusiasts, and let's build this community together. Connect with us on social media at JVuze Studio and Jillian Zapata Art for behind the scene peeks, artist spotlights, and a sneak peek at my own art. Until next time, stay inspired, stay curious, and keep that creative fire burning. This is Jillian Zapata signing off from the artist stoop. And remember, the world is your canvas, so paint it vividly.